Today we will discuss where the notation behind the integral comes from. The focus will be on creating a systematic way of calculating the area between the graph of a function and the x-axis. Area above the x-axis will be counted as positive, while area below the x-axis will be counted as negative. We will approximate the integral by finding the areas of rectangles and adding up all these areas. This is called a Riemann sum. But the rectangles aren't arbitrary, their heights are actually determined by the value of the function at specific x values. In this example, you might notice that the left corner of each rectangle is just touching the graph of the function. To better approximate the actual area between the graph of the function and the x-axis, we will use more and more rectangles. And since we're using more rectangles, they must get thinner and thinner to fit in the interval. And the thinner they get, the better their areas approximate the actual area we're looking for. Let's get into the math of what's going on behind the scenes. If we focus on a single rectangle, instead of all the rectangles at once, we can easily come up with its area, base times height. Let's call the base of this rectangle dx. We do this for two reasons. First, the base is along the x-axis, so the variable x is a natural choice. And second, dx signifies a very tiny change to x, and this base is exactly that, a very tiny change in the x direction. The height of this rectangle is y because it is the vertical distance from the x-axis to the graph. But since y equals f of x, it makes much more sense to call the height f of x so that our variables are all in terms of x. Now writing the area of this rectangle using our notation is straightforward. Take the base, dx, multiply it by our height, f of x, then rearrange this to f of x dx. Here's the power of what we just did. Once you write the area of one rectangle in complete generality, meaning you're using only variables, then you're able to write down a formula for the areas of all those insanely thin rectangles with virtually no extra work. Here the symbol sigma means to add up all of these areas. And remember that the number of rectangles we are using grows to infinity, so they get thinner and thinner. Symbolically, we write this as the limit as n goes to infinity. And that's it. That's how you can find this exact area. This concept of adding up a bunch of impossibly thin rectangles is so important that it gets its own symbol, called the integral. Under the integral sign, you can even still see the base times the height, and the upper and lower bounds on the integral tell you where to start and stop looking for area. So you're thinking to yourself, easy, now all I have to do is add up the areas of infinitely many super thin rectangles. Well, it turns out that is not easy, not at all. But the fundamental theorem of calculus gives you a beautiful way to find that area. But that's not what this video is about. This video is just about the notation that underlies the integral so that you can remember where it came from.